Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Rainbow Six Siege Operator Guide. In this video, we will be discussing Ying, the offensive operator for the SDU CTU. She can wield the T95 LSW light machine gun and the SIX-12 shotgun as her primary weapons. She can also wield the Q929 handgun as her secondary. In addition to these weapons, Ying can bring breaching charges or smoke grenades into the siege as her secondary gadgets. Before we continue with the guide, Please consider liking the video to help out the channel and subscribing to the channel for more amazing Rainbow Six Siege videos. With that out of the way, let's begin. Let's start off with her primary weapons. The T95 LSW Light Machine Gun does average damage on par with Capiteo's M249, has an average fire rate also on par with the M249, and has a lower magazine size of 80. In comparison with the other four LMGs in the game, its 80 round magazine is the second lowest, meaning you can still shoot a ton of rounds, but not as many rounds as some of the other LMGs such as fuses. The weapon also has a bit nasty of recoil, so it might take some people a little bit of time to adjust. It's still taking me time to adjust, even when I'm writing this guide and speaking to you, I haven't really mastered the recoil of the LMG, I still miss a lot of my shots. It's definitely something that's going to take time to learn. The SIX-12 shotgun does lower than average damage, has an average amount of recoil, and a smaller magazine of 6 rounds. This might sound bad since other shotguns in the game can hold up to 7 or 8, and with a shotgun, the more like 1 or 2 rounds can make all the difference. But the SIX-12 has an insanely fast reload speed for a shotgun. Instead of reloading each shell into the gun, like other shotguns, it reloads a magazine. So think of it like instead of putting one individual bullet at a time, you put in like just an entire magazine, like say for like an SR rifle or an SMG, but you're using a shotgun. This means that you can get all six rounds back, like you can just shoot them all and reload pretty quickly in comparison to other shotguns. And meaning you won't get caught reloading as often, because with shotguns, you might get caught reloading, like you go to reload and then someone whips around a quarter and kills you. With this, since you reload quickly with that magazine, that might not happen. Also, it allows you to fire all your rounds, reload, and just get back to firing all your rounds. Her only secondary weapon is the Q929. It does average damage, has low recoil, and has a magazine capacity of 10 rounds. Honestly, it's pretty average, and it will serve you well in a fight if you need to switch to it. Since it has the low recoil, I suggest you should aim for the head and use cover. If you do that, then you'll be fine, and you can probably pick up a few kills if you don't want to reload your primary weapon. As for her secondary gadgets, it really just it's a matter of personal preference. Use the breaching charges if you want more breaching options, or if you're playing solo, which I play solo, so of course I always bring along the breaching charges so I can actually breach myself and I don't have to rely on a teammate. And use the smoke grenades if you want some extra cover or if you want to confuse your enemies. Because I'll sometimes like throw a smoke grenade in like an opposite hallway or doorway and try to trick my enemies. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But that's a tactic you could use. So remember, when it comes down to that, just are you playing with friends? And what do you like to use? Like what fits your play style more? Now, my personal loadout is the T95 with an ACOG sight. I like the range of the LMG because it does have quite good range, even though the recoil is a bit nasty, and the precision of the ACOG sight. You know, you get that nice amount of magnification. You can really aim in on those headshots. Plus, I'm not really too much of a shotgun guy. I never have been. I also use the Q929 because you kind of have to. I use it with a laser sight just to get that extra hit fire accuracy. And I bring in breaching charges since I often play by myself and I prefer just to, ha to have more breaching options. The more options you have, like the more tactics you can use, I feel like that's better and that's just my play style. So that's, that's my loadout. Now let's move on to the most important thing about a new operator, their special ability. Ying's special ability is the Candela. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, I'm not sure, but I'm just going to say it like that. A ball cluster of flashbangs is basically what it is. These can be rolled under doors or drone holes or stuck to walls or floors similar to the ways uh, Fuse's cluster charge works. If the ability button is held down, you can set a 1, 2, or 3 second delay on the charge. Usually if you set it on the 1 though, it will go off as soon as it hits the ground, but you can still set a 2 or 3 second delay. She only has 3 of these candelas, meaning you're going to have to use them wisely. Also, Ying has access to special glasses that prevent her from being flashbanged, meaning she can't accidentally flashbang herself and get herself killed. Now let's discuss some tactics you can use with her Candela. Since the Candela can be set to have a delay, this gives you many options. For example, you can set up a breaching charge on a wall near a barricade, set your Candela to have a 3 second delay. Once you throw your Candela, detonate your breaching charge. 
This lets you rush the objective area and blind your enemies at the same time, giving you the advantage. You can also use it in many team scenarios. If you're playing as Ying, your Candela should start team fights because having your enemy blind is a great advantage for you and your entire team. Let's say your team sets up their breaches, then you use your Candela to kick off the shootout. Once the defending operators are blind, your team can breach and take out the defenders relatively easily. Her immunity to being flashed also gives you some special tactics. You can throw your Candela into a room or set it up on a wall and wait for delay. Half a second or a second before it goes off, you can rush around a corner or into a room and start shooting your enemies as soon as it goes off, giving you the most time to kill your enemies before the flash wears off and they can see you. Plus, you won't flash yourself, giving you a major advantage. It's also important to know that you can roll your Candela under drone holes, like uh, where the drones could normally be. I don't know if they made the holes bigger or not, but you can roll them underneath. This gives you much more variety on where you can use your Candela, because anytime you see a drone hole, just remember you can always roll it underneath. You can roll a Candela through a drone hole, then look through it to shoot uh, anyone's feet, or shoot the people that immediately go prone after being flashbang, because I ran into quite a few of those. So you can just roll it under, they'll either start shooting wildly or they'll go prone, and you can shoot their feet or them. And honestly, it makes for some pretty funny kills. Now, let's get to the combos and counters. Ying combos well with operators that are able to take advantage of her Candela, meaning like they can take advantage of... Uh, their enemies being flashbang. So operators that can breach quickly or breach through reinforcements can really combo well with her. If she rolls her Candela into a room, operators such as Ash can quickly blow a hole in the wall and rush in to shoot the blind defenders. And Ash is great at rushing, as many of you know. Thermite and Hybiana can use this tactic as well, but they're going to have to set up their abilities before the Candela is used, so it's going to take some team planning. Three speed operators can also do this to a lesser extent. Operators like IQ, Ash, and Hybiana can use their speed to rush into the objective room while the defenders are flashed. You get the speed of the operators plus the enemies that can't see, giving a rush a great chance at succeeding. And rush has already worked well before Blood Orchid came out, so now that she can blind an entire room of defenders, rushes can work even better, technically. And to be honest, really any operator can combo well with her, as long as the player has great aim. Once the enemies are flashed, it's a matter of shooting them and dodging their blind fire. This means operators that can stay at range, say like Glaz and Blackbeard, could technically combo well with Ying in the right scenarios and the right situations. Now to the counters. When I think of counters for Ying, two names come to mind. Bandit and Jaeger. Bandit can place his shock charges on barbed wire. This will destroy Ying's Candela if they're rolled into it. Jaeger's ADS systems work in the same way. If the Candela is thrown or rolled through its radius, the ADS will shoot it and destroy it, pretty much wasting one of the Candela. Now, I, at first I thought that Mute would counter Ying's, Ying as well, because I thought that maybe like the Jammer would like stop it or something like that. But that isn't the case. If a Candela is thrown or rolled past the Mute Jammer, it has no effect on it. This means that Mute is not a counter, which really surprised me. I'd also like to note that you can shoot a rolling Candela. It's pretty hard to do, but if you manage it, you can destroy them with any gun in the game. Now, that's about it for this Ying Operator Guide. I want to hear from you guys. Do you like Ying? Do you like her weapons? Her ability? Also, how are you guys enjoying Operation Blood Orchid so far? And let me know in the comments about uh, these videos, because I'm always looking to improve my format or to improve my videos in some way, so please give me constructive criticism down below. Now, I don't know, so let me know in the comments down below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and thank you all for watching. Please leave a comment, like, and subscribe to the channel for more amazing Rainbow Six Siege content. I'm the Battle Moon, and I will see you in the next Siege.